Stephen Wayne Rochon, U.S. Coast Guard, Rear Admiral. And before I retired, I received another phone call that shocked me. Uh, my secretary in Norfolk said, uh, the White House is on the phone, and they'd like to speak to you. And I said, geez, I only have three months left on active duty. And I said again, what did I do wrong? Well? But they actually will offer me a position to come run the White House for the president. So I did that in, uh, with three months still left on active duty, and then I stayed on for four years after I retired. That was uh, interesting. Uh, the, the title was, uh, was not anything that uh, I found was glorifying in the beginning. When I received a phone call from uh, presidential personnel, they said, we'd like you to interview uh, for a job here. Uh, someone uh, referred you to us as chief usher of the White House. And I says, oh, God, I went through 36 years in military, uh, made rear admiral, and then someone wants to call me a chief usher. All I can think of is that somebody in a movie theater showing someone their seats with a flashlight. And I says, uh, it didn't sound very, very nice to me. But then when they explained that that was only the historical title for something that uh, was created back in 1866, and that title carried through, but it says actually you would run the White House. You would take care of the President's house. Sort of like a general manager of a five-star hotel. And so I, I thought about it, and I says, I don't, you know, I, I thought that I was going to get a chance to go back home and, and uh, enjoy my, my hometown and do some other things. but. Uh, uh, after nine interviews, back and forth from my office in Norfolk to Washington, D.C., after nine interviews, the last two being the First Lady, Laura Bush, and the very last one was with uh, President George W. Bush in the Oval Office, closed doors. And before I got to that point, I was standing outside the gates on Pennsylvania Avenue. And I says, I'm about ready to go in to have a private meeting with the President of the United States, the leader of the free world. And I says, oh boy, what do I, you know, I did my homework, I found out what the executive residence was all about, but there, those daggone little butterflies again. And so I reached out and I called one of my mentors, Michael Jackson, not the singer. He was the deputy uh, uh, director of uh, Homeland Security, and uh, but I couldn't reach him, and so I called another mentor, uh, Ralph Basham, who was uh, head of the Secret Service, and I knew him through other uh, positions. He says, "Steve, I'm gonna give you one piece of advice before you go meet the president." He said, "I know you. You've done your homework." Uh, you're probably prepared, but my only advice to you is to be yourself. And I thought, and I says, wow, that's easy, I could do that. And so I went in past Secret Service, escorted to the Oval Office, and here was the President of the United States. Hey, come on in, Admiral. Nice, jovial uh, person. We sat down and the two armchairs. Here was the resolute desk that was selected by John Kennedy in front of me. And I said, good Lord have mercy. Of course I said it to myself. But the president asked a, a couple of interesting questions. He said, um, uh, Admiral, how's your marriage? And I mentioned to you that my, my first wife uh, didn't want to stick around. So I married this wonderful woman in Coast Guard headquarters, my first day in Washington, in the parking lot. And so he says, how's your marriage? And I said, Mr. President, I, I think I have the best marriage in the world, second to yours. Uh, the President liked that answer. Uh, and again, I thought about my, my mentor. He says, be yourself. So that, that was my, 
myself, uh, and uh, he kind of nodded his head as the president does at times. But then he asked another question. He says, uh, "He says, what do you think about this chief usher business?" He says, "That's kind of a strange name to call an admiral." And um, I thought about it for a split second. I says, "Well, Mr. President, what's in the title?" I I just think it's. Uh, uh, a phenomenal opportunity that I might get an, a chance to work directly for the President of the United States so the title doesn't make a difference. And uh, he nodded on that one. And we had a good 45 minutes, which is unusual to have that long in the Oval Office with just the President of the United States. And so the uh, our interview ended and we shook hands and uh, the next day, I received a call from presidential personnel, and it says, uh, one, uh, we'd like to let you know you've been selected for the position. And I said, oh, wow. And two, uh, we don't know what happened in the Oval Office, but the president seemed to be a little bit uneasy about the title. And we want you to come in and, for the first time in history, uh, change the title. So uh, as they think about it for a while. So I, I, I uh, came back in and we sat down and I threw some ideas out. And the one that they liked was uh, director of the executive residence. And then the historians said, and chief usher. So I couldn't get rid of that, uh, that chief usher. And I thought it was pretty neat. I didn't, uh, I, I, I kept it because I'm a, a passionate student of history, and so I wanted to hold on to that piece anyway. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's a good thing because the industry, the people that I associate with, all they know is is Chief Usher. Now, had I known uh, a year later, actually, it wasn't even a year. Yeah, it was a year later. Uh, my first job major event at the White House, because you asked, what did I do as the Chief Usher of the White House? It, uh, in a general sense, uh, I had 95 staff members, which included the chefs, the butlers, the engineers, uh, the flower shop, the storekeepers, uh, you name it. Everyone at that was there to run the house, the carpenters, the plumbers, uh, uh, worked on my staff. And we were to maintain that the most historic house in the country uh, that Washington built. And not only maintain the house, but to take care of the first family, the care and feeding of the first family, and their guests, senators, congressmen, kings, queens, prime ministers, to roll out the red carpet to make sure that anyone that came in that house for any event would leave there with the wow factor. And so in a, that's the general, and also the historical part of the house, preserving uh, the history. Uh, and often that was challenging, particularly for a new administration that wanted to do something in the house that might, uh, for an example, put a nail in the Truman renovated column. And, and it was my job to make sure that I preserved that for 200 more years. And so sometimes I wasn't popular because I'd have to tell the First Lady, you can't do that, man. <laughs> but here's another idea of how you can get that accomplished. Uh, but had I thought um, about the title that I found out shortly after I got there, and I was brought on board pretty early while I was still in uniform, Coast Guard uniform, and my first event was the state visit with the Queen of England, and it was a month and a half away. Now you talk about intimidating. Didn't know anything about the house, but I had to learn real quickly from my staff. Of course, they had, were able to do things with their eyes closed. But anyway, the, the event turned out uh, close to perfect. Uh, the state dinner that night, everyone in black ties, Her Majesty, the Queen was so impressed with the work that my staff did, that she wanted to meet me and, and a handful of my senior staff, my executive chef, 
who is a wonderful woman that has uh, gotten so much notoriety in the world for her, her culinary skills, and my, uh, my uh, maitre d', and the executive pastry chef, who was another jewel of a guy. My mother even taught him how to make New Orleans rum cakes. Uh, and so she went down the line and met, shook hands with each one of us. But after she got back to London, shortly after that I received a call uh, from my counterpart saying that the Queen was inviting me and uh, a small amount of my senior staff to come to Buckingham Palace to see how the Brits do it. And I said, wow, this is going to be something else. Uh, and not to uh, uh, use the taxpayers' dollars, we decided to do it out of our own pockets. And so we flew to uh, London and went to the Queen's diplomatic reception. Black tie, actually it was a white tie event, with all these foreign diplomats. And here comes the Queen. Uh, and I was about to, I wanted to mention to you that I learned of the title of my counterpart at Buckingham who ran the palace. And I said, had I thought about that, maybe I would have made a different suggestion. But his title was Master of the Household. Uh, that wouldn't have flown in the United States anyway. But anyway, he positioned me at the end of the Queen's uh, journey of meeting her guest in the palace and shaking hands. He put me at the end of that uh, line, I think it was the white sitting room. He says, um, Admiral, I'm going to put you here because just a few steps beyond that is the Queen's apartment and more than likely she's going to go home. She's going to go in, her, in that door. So and she might just come over and say hello. Well, that's what happened. The Queen came over and I brought my wife with me. And, uh, and she says, and who are you, young man? And I says, uh, Your Majesty, I'm uh, Admiral Roshan, the uh, Chief Usher of the White House. And uh, we entertained you when you came over to the White House a few months ago. And she says, oh, yes, I remember. And she says, Philip, Philip, come over here and meet the Admiral. And so she shook my wife's hand and everyone else's hands, and we were in disbelief that we had that up uh, close uh, personal relationship with, with the Queen, Her Majesty. So yeah, it was just a, a, a great way to sort of end my federal service uh, to, to this country. Another event that made it so enjoyable to work there during the Bush administration uh, was the relationship with uh, the First Lady, Laura Bush, uh, a Jew of a person. Just a, I've never seen her without a smile, never. She treated the staff royally. The events were impeccable because she was into the history of the house, which made it really enjoyable. I enjoyed walking President Bush to the office also. Uh, and one day we walked, he was really upset because the day before, uh, Barney, his little Scottish Terrier, uh, received bad press for biting a reporter. And I was there, I saw the whole incident. And he was upset, and he was patting little Barney on the head as we walked out to the South Lawn. He says, it's a shame. They just ripped him up, and ripped up my little dog in the, in the newspaper. And I said, Mr. President, I was there when he bit the reporter. The reporter was intimidating. He had a, a writing pad in his hand, and he went for Barney's head to pat his head and Barney in defense within a split second just and drew blood on his finger. I said, but don't worry about it, sir. I think you ought to give Barney a, uh, a medal of freedom because it was just a reporter. And he was, he started laughing after that. And so it was just from A to Z, the working there uh, uh, was just uh, an incredible uh, experience. And folks ask me what I miss most about the White House. And of course, I do miss the historical part of it, but I really miss the staff. 
95 really professional people and the 250 part-time folks that helped us with events. Great experience.